Welcome to Ireland with Michael. I'm Michael Londra and in this show I get to tell you everything that I love about my home country, the only way I know how, through music. Today we're standing on the banks of the River Nore in the beautiful medieval city of Kilkenny, twice the capital of Ireland. Now this town is full of rich history, home to some talented musicians and proud as can be of their hurling heritage. Now, coming from Wexford myself, I ought to despise the place as they are our main sporting rivals. But this is my father's birthplace and as he loves it, so do I. So join me as we explore all that Kilkenny has to offer. On the beautiful River Nore stands a medieval castle in the landmark city of Kilkenny. Just a 90 minute drive and a world away from Dublin city is the unique county of Kilkenny and its famed capital, Kilkenny City. I've said it before, Ireland is far from lacking in castles, but Kilkenny has one of the oldest and best preserved in all of the country. The first wooden structure was built by Strongbow, a Norman invader and senior justice of Ireland in his day. It was passed down to William the Marshal, popularly known as the greatest knight who ever lived, when he married old Strongbow's daughter, Isabel. William was busy, a tournament champion who served five kings of England and was once regent of the kingdom. But he still found the time to put down the first stone castle on the site, completed in 1260. 130 years later, the castle was bought by James Butler, his surname originally a title. As chief butler to the king, he was responsible for feeding the royalty and their retinue whenever they visited the Emerald Isle, and for pouring the first goblet of wine for his majesty. This duty is immortalized in the family crest with three cups upon a shield. The butlers, Earls of Ormond, were based out of the castle until 1965 when it was sold to the Irish people. Well, except for that brief stint in the 1640s when we Irish did what we do best, we rebelled. Kilkenny Castle was the seat of parliament for this Irish confederacy until that perennial villain, Oliver Cromwell, laid siege to the city and even damaged the east wall and tower of the castle in 1650. It's not very sporting of him at all. The Republican forces were again besieged in the castle by Irish Free State forces during the Irish Civil War in 1922. Where were the butlers during all that? In the bedroom above the main gate, naturally, with a machine gun posted outside the door. So you see, when I said there's history in this place, I meant it. And there's more of it on the inside. Let's take a look. Along the walls of this long room is every butler that ever lived in the place. These massive portraits really make their presence known. They're a sight to behold as both brilliant works of art and larger than life memorials to the many eras of history which that family and this castle persevered through. And as you might have heard, the acoustics in this room are simply pristine. There's really no one better to show them off than Patrick Bafter, Kilkenny native and premier Irish violinist, accompanied by his mother, Maura. Let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. 